so here we go. It was time once again for 100 days in Minecraft Dragonfire. So if you guys are fans of my channel, you're gonna know that this is our favorite mod. Tiny Turtle and his team absolutely killed it. So recently we went ahead and did the 100 days in Minecraft Dragonfire, but I made it as a series. We did 30 episodes doing 100 days exactly. It's about 30 to 35 oh hours of gameplay, so I've decided to condense it down into one video. And as you can see, I did the normal Minecraft 100 days things. I chopped down a tree, well, punched a tree, and then killed an animal, a sheep. He's dead now, ripped that sheep. And then I made myself some tools. So my plan is to commentate over this video and try not to stop. I think I remember everything that went on, but you never know, so hopefully it makes the video kind of funny. Anyway, as you can see there, I opened up my satchel, which you get at the start of any Dragonfire World experience, and I got myself a Drake Egg. My first Dragon Egg. Okay, so I do have a very cool map mod installed, which makes things a lot easier. I was able to see my surroundings using the map and check out any, well, strange buildings or looking situations on the map. The first thing I checked out was this place. It was some sort of a shrine. It was boring. There was absolutely nothing here. But I did find this. It was a pile of Minecraft blocks. Oh my days, this is going to be amazing! Okay, I mean, I'm being sarcastic, but I did get some iron from that thing, which was pretty cool. Then I saw some ants. They're trees that want to kill you because they're crazy. And then I found this, well, abandoned house. I was thinking about making this my home because it, well, was already there and I could just improve it. But I decided it was a little bit too crummy for my liking, so I decided to head on out. Oh yeah, and then I found a grave. What? A grave? Yeah, this was a crazy 100 days. Inside this grave, I found paper. Not a dead man, just some paper. I then decided, well, to make this my shelter for the first night. It was day one, and I had a, a grave as a home. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, crazy, super weird. Anyway, we decided then to get some rest and head on in to day two. And here we were. I was cooking some chicken on day two and making myself some iron tools so you know that I was minecrafting people. I did have to start mining because I needed more resources, found myself some coal, which is nice, and I also have vein mining, which is nicer. I am super lazy and like mining takes ages, having vein mining in this is just so good. I mean check that out, I just got an abundance of iron and then found a big stack of diamonds. You absolutely love it, I mean it was only day two and this was unbelievably epic. I got back up to my graveyard home which is still seriously weird and I don't know why I did it but I was able to upgrade my tools once more to get myself a diamond pickaxe. You love to see it, people. Rolling into day three, I was then able to go ahead and make myself a full set of iron armor, which is nice. I mean, yeah, we, we were protected now. You, you, not majorly, but I was able to fight off some like zombies and things. We didn't see any mobs yet, which was kind of weird, but I did find my second dragon egg that day. It was a Gronko. These things are absolutely sick. Alright, so that was episode one. We were into episode two, which was in turn day three. Is, is that confusing? Did that confuse you guys? Kind of confused me. Okay, anyway, we went mining once more, found ourselves some dragon fossils this time, which was actually pretty awesome because as you can see, it drops dragon fossils. Because that's, that's what they are. Anyway, these bones can be crafted into something absolutely epic. And we will get to that in the future. As I was saying, we didn't really see any mobs. But then we did because we came across a zombie spawner. I was able to take out those guys and take some of the goodies that they left in that chest. They weren't that amazing, but I took them nonetheless. Got myself some obsidian and then also found some more diamonds, which is great because, I mean, when you find diamonds in Minecraft, you feel like an absolute boss. As you can see, this nice loot chest was filling up and it was looking pretty good. I had a look at my map and also found this ancient tomb thing. I, I don't know, is that what it is? I can't remember, but there was also a sheep and a tree. Check, check this out, guys. Okay, well, watch this. It's coming up now in a second. There, there look at that. What? What? Why is that? Why is that sheep in a tree? 
Yeah, that was really weird. Anyway, I went into this little tomb place where you can flick the switches and try open up a secret wall and find a chest, and uh, I could never do it. I never really bothered to learn how, so I just broke the blocks with my pickaxe and took the loot from the chest. Yeah, that, that's how I roll. You know what I'm saying? I don't do things Probably. Probably? Probably. See, I did it again. Anyway, I found some more diamonds and I also got myself a little bit of an enchanting book and found a really cool egg. That really cool egg was the Folly Falcon. Yeah, the next day I went around exploring, found more buildings, and it turns out it was this stray spawner. Did not like that, so I killed it. I also found another spawner, which was scary too, so I destroyed that. And then I found another falcon dragon. This time it was the Blaze Falcon. This could be one of my favorite eggs in the game, super cool. Then I came across this little house, which was really nice, and I was like, Hey, sir, can I have your home? Because I need somewhere to live, and I'm kind of evil, so I'm going to just kill you and take it anyway. Anyway, I went inside and decided, yes, I'm going to keep this place. It is pretty cool. I mean, I've got some red beds. Red's my color. I like it. And I decided to spend the rest of the day and the next couple of days just making this place a little bit bigger and a little bit more habitable. Yeah, ha habitable? Like, is that how you say that word? Uh, I'm not very good at English. Anyway, yeah, I made the place a little bit bigger. Upstairs, I made myself a dragon egg room. Dragon egg vault, if you will. It looks kind of cool. Put the little skull up there for decoration because I am a decorating genius. But anyway, put the eggs down and this place did look kind of cool. I did just spend the rest of my time making sure that this place was nice. I made it a little bit bigger, made myself a little crafting area with some furnaces, and then made my first dragon egg incubator, the lava incubator. It was only a tier one, but it was a start and I was happy. So I continued on making this house a home, made myself an armor stand, and well, decided to make some better armor. Oh yeah, you love to see it people, a full set of diamond armor. The most baller move in Minecraft. And I didn't put it on, I just put put it on the rack. I uh, don't know why I didn't put it on. Anyway, I decided to go get myself some lava in these buckets so I could power up my incubator and get my very first dragon. Ooh, there it was, the Blaze Falcon Egg. Incubated, ready to hatch. I decided to call her Inferno. Yep, I am the Inferno Nation. This is my Inferno Dragon. It is looking absolutely epic. I fed it up some dragon treats, made some beautiful windows with some nice glass, and that was the end of the day. We were on to episode four, which I'm pretty sure was day 11. I'm trying to check that real quick over here and keep on talking. Um, it's not working out for me because I can't seem to find it. And there, nope, still have him. Yes, it was day 11. I've totally missed what was going on there, so you can just figure it out for yourselves but well, it looks as if i was making myself a diamond pickaxe pickaxe oh no i meant to say pickaxe but i said pickaxe anyway i made the pickaxe and i put silk touch on it i also went then and found myself a hollow egg pretty much a halloween dragon egg kind of cool i don't think i was ever gonna hatch it and then i found this place it was a village and it did look very very cool I especially liked this building. It was like some sort of a big windmill kind of thing. It had many levels and I was liking it. I was liking it a lot. I was kind of thinking that this could be my new home. So I looted up the place and decided to put away my stuff into one of the chests on the main floor. I did have to go back to my original house though and collect all of my goodies, mainly the dragon eggs and my diamond armor. I also picked up a few bookshelves along the way with my silk touch pickaxe, which was nice and made myself a little enchanting room. I then noticed there was a nest across the way. That thing looked pretty huge and pretty epic, so I was gonna go check that out, but first I got down my eggs and the incubator, but then set off out to go and check out what this nest was. And lo and behold, oh my days, it was the Bewilderbeast Egg. This thing is one of the most rare dragons in the game. But as you'll see, the nests are actually kind of common, so it doesn't really make sense. But anyway, I got myself an epic egg in the Bewilderbeast Egg, and I was able to go ahead, get myself some ice with a silk hook pickaxe, and make me an ice incubator. I filled it up with water to give it power, and the incubation process had begun for the Bewilderbeast Egg. I was also able to finish off my little enchanting room with this epic enchanting table that I eventually figured out how to craft, put it down, and that thing was ready to get me some epic enchantments. Hmm, 
That was a good few days. I mean, a lot was achieved, but mainly this. We have got a brand new dragon, the Bewilderbeast. I decided to call this thing Protego. I can't really remember, it's some sort of Greek thing that means protector, obviously, Protego. I don't know, but I hatched it and it looked absolutely amazing. Alright, so we were into day 14, this would have been episode 5. I started off by making myself some mana infused iron to then go ahead and make a dragon orb to pick up my man Protego. These little things do come in super handy. Anyway, then I found a new dragon egg nest, this time the Archangel was found. This thing was absolutely epic, but then I got attacked by these little dudes. Crazy frog spearsmen. And then I ended up here. It was a Fire Nation outpost. Now that was a little bit more difficult and it was dark. I had to bounce out, play it strategically and go back in when I was ready. It was kind of crazy, kind of a cool battle, but I did get it done. I found myself some fire resistance potions and a piece to the Fire Nation map. Again, you will see what is coming with that in the future. Pretty epic. Anyway, I got back home and put down all of my dragon eggs. It was starting to look pretty cool. I didn't really realize at the time, but one of my main goals was going to be to try and get every single dragon egg in the game. It's gonna be pretty difficult. Anyway, I then enchanted my diamond armor to get, well, a full set of enchanted diamond armor, which I did. I also enchanted my bow and my sword. So let's be honest, I was looking pretty cool. I also then went ahead and got myself some more ice because I did want to go ahead and upgrade my incubators. It's a little bit of a hassle, but it has to be done. And when these things do get upgraded, they look absolutely epic and they make the incubation process a lot quicker. So after a lot of materials, I got this thing up to level four, which was pretty nice. I did the same for the fire incubator and hit them both up with the tier four well upgrade and yeah let's be honest they look absolutely epic it requires diamonds for tier five so i didn't quite get to it yet i then saw this structure wasn't really sure what it was so i decided to go have a look and when i got there i found this crazy skull portal thing and some chest with some goodies again i don't really know what this place was all i know is it was creepy and kind of cool at the same time I did find some diamonds though, which I'm super happy about. Have you guys noticed that I love diamonds? Anyway, it was on to day 18 and I started off this day by making this unbelievably cool fenced off area for my chickens and my cows. And, and then I killed sheep. I don't know why I always kill sheep. I feel like sheep get a hard time. Yeah, me and sheep don't get along very well. Anyway, I put an extra enchantment on my bow and headed on out. I found this. It's a ship containing sharks. Shark pirates. I killed all of those and got myself the parrot dragon egg. Remember, I am going to try and find all of these eggs. I then found a high drop terror, which is a super cool water dragon. And then I found um th this guy. Oh, what? I can never remember this guy's name. Super common. Let me know in the comments, guys. Anyway, then I found a notch apple, which is very cool. And then I found myself the mitt dragon nest. Got myself the mitt dragon egg and decided to head on home. I found a, a nearby village which had a waystone, so that was pretty good for traveling. I now had nine dragon eggs just sitting there waiting to be hatched. I also realized I only needed one more map part and put down my dra- What? Hold up! Wait a minute, where did I get that dragon head? It must be used as a decoration block somewhere, but I can't remember getting that. Anyway, I did find the last part of the Fire Nation map and a cool Fire Nation sword, so definitely worth it. And then I saw this guy. Oh my days and Night Fury. I mean, we all know that Night Furies are unbelievably epic and super rare, but seeing one for the first time was a good omen. I did find that monstrous nightmare nest and egg, which was nice. And then I found this old, well, temple tomb kind of thing. It was super weird, part of one of the mods that I installed, can't remember the name of it, but it did give me some nice things. I got a lot of bones and a wither skeleton skull, I got some gold and some more iron and emeralds. I also found some enchantment books and another golden apple which was super cool. These things are super bountiful and I absolutely love it. We were into episode 7 and day 22 and I decided it was time that I needed to get more food so I could make dragon treats so I could then in turn level up all my dragons. 
Now the best way to do this is to make a farm, so that's what I began doing, crafting up some stuff that I could make myself a chicken farm. And then I realized I was going to have to go to the nether, so I decided to go back to this weird portal room that had a skull, and I was going to use this as my way to get to the nether. So just like that, we were here. I got myself some of this lovely little quartz so I could make quartz blocks because it was essential to what I wanted to do. I made up more materials that I needed and start excavating the ground because this was going to be my lovely little chicken farm. I got to work, I got building and eventually I had one of these little units. I then had to get all of my chickens and lure them into this little hole. Chickens are so dumb. You do realize you're going in there to die, right? Well, not really. These were the ones that were going to make the eggs that were going to hatch, and then the ones that were going to hatch were going to die. But essentially, it's a slaughter room. Eventually, I did get some chicken from it, and I was able to make myself some dragon treats and level up a few of my dragons. I then decided to enchant that Fire Nation sword, which was nice. I got sharpness tree and breaking tree. This thing was pretty sick, but not as sick as my bow, because it now had infinity. Oh, I don't have to worry about arrows anymore. Absolutely epic. Anyway, I found another temple. This one just a standard Minecraft temple. Went down, found myself some more bones, some gold, and some other essential things. It's really bones what I'm after because they can be used to create the dragon treats. I also found this little desert temple, but I wasn't quite ready to go in there. But then the holy grail. I actually did it. I found a night fury nest. Oh my days, what an epic find. I got home and got it incubating immediately. I was super excited about this thing, and we were now on to episode 8, which was day 26. I actually made myself a second um, chicken farm because, yeah, I needed a lot of chicken. And eventually, after filling up the incubator with more of the lava to power it up, I was able to go ahead, make more dragon treats, and hatch the brand new Night Fury. Oh my days, it was so sick. I called him Shooter. I don't know why, I just did. I can't remember. But anyway, my Night Fury was Shooter, and I decided to use all the dragon treats that I had created from the chicken from my farm to get this guy leveled up so I could fly him. Oh, you absolutely love to see it. I am in flight, getting around is going to be so much easier, and it was actually a knife fury. I was looking so good, soaring above the skies, and I was able to get around a lot easier. I then found this storm stratus egg and another pirate um, parrot egg. I, I, I don't know why I said pirate there. But anyway, then I found myself a catastrophic quaken as well. That is a super rare dragon and really hard to find. I then found an elemental egg as well. I mean, things were getting so much easier that I now had a dragon that could fly and get me around super fast. I then found this guy. This was a Nightbringer dragon, super cool. And then I found another one of these temples. I mean, I love these things because they have so much stuff. I got more bones, I got myself another wither skeleton skull, I got some more enchanting uh, books, enchantment books I should say, and I got myself some blocks of gold, more diamonds and other goodies. I really love those things. Anyway, as you can see, I was starting to get a lot of dragon eggs, which was absolutely epic, and I also finished off these few days by leveling up my Night Fury once more. Alright, so just like that, we were 30 days down and into day 31. My farm was yielding me a lot of chicken, which was nice. I was able to go ahead and make more dragon treats, but it was now time to use my dragon to good effect. I set out once more to go explore and see what I could find. First thing I found was a Night Stalker egg, which was cool. I also found another temple. I mean, I was coming across these things like they were nothing. And this one was epic. I mean, I got a Sharpness 5, Book Punch 2, Blast Protection, more bones, more gold. It was so good. And then I got attacked by these crazy serpent team as I left. These things were absolutely nuts, but I was able to kill them and get myself one of the dungeon keys. I then went back home and upgraded some of my armor and weapons, well not my armor, my weapons, because I was going to go into one of these dungeons to see if I could find the Rex egg. Now, this was a tier one. 
For some reason, I thought this was the tier that had the dragon egg. It's not. It's the easy tier. It was kind of a waste of time. I got pork and some iron and gold. Uh, I don't, don't really know, but I realized then I had to go ahead and kill one of these guys, a scorpion rider who would then drop the tier tree key that I needed. And then I found this book that said, with life one can wink oh so mindlessly. I don't know what that means. I don't know what mod it's from. I don't know why I showed you, but I did, so it's over now. Anyway, we were into the tree tier dungeon. My dog just barked, but it's okay. We went on true. It was extremely dangerous and kind of tense because, yeah, I almost died a couple of times here, but eventually I got true to the end and opened up the chest to find... Thankfully, the Rex Egg. Super difficult to obtain, but we had got it, so happy days. I then left the dungeon and was greeted by that guy. Not good, took me a while to get past him, but then I found what looked to be a Fury Temple. A nice little ending to those few days. Alright, so we rolled into day 36, and guys, the next couple of days were absolutely epic beyond belief. So, I remember I got a map piece a couple of days ago, but it was actually a duplicate, and this was the final piece that we needed. So, I was super happy with that find. I ended up fixing up my diamond armor because it was getting a little bit too weak for my liking. I ended up making the Fire Nation map with the three pieces that I found. Now I could go to the Fire Nation dimension. Super epic. So I got my man Shooter up to level 50. We clicked the map and into the brand new dimension we went. And check out where I spawn. Right inside a Fire Nation tower. Dude, I broke those spawners as quick as I could, took a look around, and decided not to go up through the tower because I probably would have got killed, so I just flew to the top. I took out a couple of these towers, taking out mages and magma golems. Look at the size of these dudes, absolutely huge. But I was picking up some good stuff as I did so. But the main reason that I was here was to take on this guy. This was the tree-headed Seagrass. This dude was absolutely insane, but with a good bit of strategy, I was able to take him out. And he dropped his head, but more importantly, the fire essence. This was what I was going to use to turn my knife fury into a flame fury. So like I said, I was finding a lot of stuff and eventually I got myself a full set of the Fire Nation armor. This stuff is absolutely epic and it's gonna protect me a, a little bit more than the diamonds. So that was a pretty epic find. I decided to put the Seabra's head um, here, because it looks cool, and I put down my full set of the Fire Nation armor. But well, now it was time to do what I had been waiting for. I put in the special crystals and the fire essence to create the Flame Fury Stone. Oh my days, it was about to happen. We could now combine this stone with our Night Fury to complete the mission and create the Flame Fury Dragon. This guy is absolutely sick. What an epic few days. So I usually keep the Ender Dragon battle to the end of my 100 days video, but this time I wanted to get it done early, so I had a lot of XP. So that was my new mission. I wanted to make sure that I could go and take on the End Dragon as quick as possible. So I made myself a new Ender Portal, a little bit closer to my home. As you can see, it looks absolutely epic. And we decided to go to the Nether to see if we could find a fortress to get ourselves some blaze rods. We found it pretty quickly because I do have the advantage of having the map and also a dragon to get me there. I also had some Fire Nation potions, well fire resistance potions I should say, and that helped me out a lot. So this task, which is usually pretty difficult, was super easy. I was able to get all of the blaze powder that I needed and get back to my base. I then needed to go and get myself some ender pearls. I don't know what it is about Endermen, they just never want to spawn near me. I think I got like one in a whole night and then I kind of got distracted. I started seeing some eggs so I decided to go get them. This is when I went down to get the galaxy egg and this was extremely close to me dying. I had to basically build my way out of that little place and go and hit a golden apple. These guys were intense, but eventually I was able to take them all out and grab the galaxy egg. 
I then found a Stormcutter egg, which was pretty nice, and, um, yeah, I know I was trying to find Ender Pearls, but, like I said, I always just get distracted. I went looking for more Endermen again, found a couple, but, again, just got distracted and was doing some mining, grabbing some stuff, finding some more dragon eggs, and eventually I did, well, get myself some Eyes of Ender to go and look for the End Portal. Basically, I had to find a stronghold. And for a while, I did not have a clue where it was. I think it was underwater, so this was going to be seriously difficult and seriously annoying, so I did spend a bit of time, but eventually I made my way to a little island out in the middle of the ocean, dug down, and actually found it. I was in the stronghold, advancement made, I spy, and then eventually, I did find the portal. Again, another part where I almost died. I was standing here, minding my own business, and then a silverfish knocked me straight into the lava. Are you kidding me? Oh my days, luckily I had blocks beside me and was able to build up and get myself out of there. Oh dude, I nearly died way too much there. But anyway, like I said, I needed to get myself more ender pearls. So we went on an enderman hunt and thankfully we did find a lot but it did take a lot of time. Don't get me wrong, I mean, it's super fun killing those dudes, and eventually I did get myself 10 Ender Pearls, which I could turn into 10 beautiful Eyes of Ender. I also made myself some more Dragon Treats and upgraded my armor once more. I know you guys are thinking, why am I not using the Fire Nation armor? Basically, I want to get enough XP so I can enchant that stuff super well. So, I decided it was time. I got myself back to the stronghold and lit up this beautiful portal. It was time for me to go to the end and take on the most infamous dragon known to man. The Ender Dragon. It was time. I jumped in. And I was pretty sure that I was ready. I mean, yeah, it was going to be super easy. Until I spawned here. I hate spawning miles away. But thankfully, I have a dragon. <laughs> Once you have a dragon, this battle becomes unbelievably easy. I harnessed my inner Katniss Everdeen and start shooting with my bow, taking out all of those crystals. It was only a matter of time before I took out the Ender Dragon and got all of that delicious XP. Rain down on me, brother. I want all those goodies. Yum yum. I gobbled them all up, got the XP that I wanted, and I also got myself a brand new dragon egg. This time, the Ender Dragon Egg. I really wish I could hatch this thing, though. Probably should have put that mod in, because there's a mod that does that, yeah. Alright, anyway, I grabbed this thing, I was super happy, unlocked a couple of good achievements, and headed back home to do exactly what I planned to do. Get this Fire Nation armor and enchant it with some sick enchantments. I got fire protection on that, blast protection on this one, and um, yeah, protection tree on that one. I wasn't, get, I wasn't getting any multiple um, enchantments apart from the boots. I was super disappointed with that, but I mean, it was a full set now of enchanted Fire Nation armor, so I can't complain. I then decided to treat myself by getting myself a brand new dragon right before upgrading this Fire Nation spear. But I had the Storm Stratus egg incubated and I was ready to hatch this thing straight after I made myself a dragon orb. I decided to call this guy Cluck because um, I know you can't hear it now but there was a lot of clucking going on there because that's where the chicken farms are and it's super annoying and uh, chickens clucking cluck the dragon, I, I don't know. We had a new dragon, it was a Storm Stratus and it was absolutely epic. It was day like what 45 and I mean we had achieved so much already but we are not finished yet. Uh, of course we're not. I mean, it's only day 46. Anyway, there's the dragon egg, looking pretty cool, but I decided I wanted to change the pace a little bit. Let's slow things down a little bit. I wanted to make myself a lovely little dragon science lab. So, I decided to convert one of these houses in the village because I'm lazy and I didn't want to build a whole structure myself. Anyway, I got to work making all the components that I needed for my dragon science lab. We had the DNA incubator, we had um, the DNA combiner legs, and obviously that made the DNA combiner after we got the other bits and pieces. I mean, it's a bit of a process, but these things are super cool when they get made. 
I had the DNA extractor and I made myself some iron eggs which would contain the fused dragons. This is so epic. If you have not seen it before, oh man, it's so good. Anyway, I put the two pieces down and we could see the crazy hybrid dragons that we could create in the future. But I kind of had a problem. So the Night Fury that I had is now a Flame Fury, so I could not get the DNA that I wanted. I needed Night Fury DNA, obviously, so we went on the hunt for another one. But thankfully, I actually found it pretty easy. Super good find, I now had a brand new Night Fury egg, and I also found this obelisk that we were going to use in the future. Anyway, it was on to the next episode, which was 14, and I decided to get into my Discord, that you can join, by the way, link in the description, and get involved. I was asking the fans in the Discord what I should do next, and they were saying that I should go to the Fire Nation in the Nether and hunt out their special egg. Oh yeah, and Yordi said to get a Bone Fury and get a Shadow Fury. Pretty good suggestions, and um, just between me and you right now, I basically did both of those things. Anyway, I got as many dragon treats as I could and hatched a brand new Night Fury. I decided to call him Ghost because the plan would eventually for this guy to become a Shadow Fury. And you guys will see in the future that the Shadow Fury is pretty much the best ever dragon. Oh yeah, and Bone Crusher said, why don't you go to the end and get some Elytra? I kind of totally forgot about that, so thank you, Bone Crusher. Good suggestion. I was going to get to that as well. Anyway, I spent some time making myself some mana infused glass and some mana infused iron so I could make empty DNA orbs. These were needed to basically get the DNA of the dragons so I could combine them and make some hybrids. Anyway, I got enough dragon treats from all of the chicken in the chicken farm and I was eventually able to get Ghost to level 100, use the DNA extractor and get the DNA from his body. I now had the DNA of a Night Fury and remember the fossilized dragon that I got from all those dragon fossils? Yeah, I was able to combine those two to create a brand new Bone Fury egg. Hoo-hoo, my first hybrid dragon. I got him into the DNA incubator and this guy started cooking up. Eventually he was ready to be cracked and ready to be hatched. Oh man, this is so good. It was time to get my first hybrid dragon. This Bone Fury was going to be absolutely sick and I called him Skelly because I couldn't really think of anything else and he's a skeleton and he's a dragon and yeah, well, I don't know, it's pretty cool. But there he is, a hybrid dragon, the Bone Fury. He looks absolutely sick. I was so happy with those few days. So we were now over halfway in our 100 day adventure and I took the advice of my man Bone Crusher from the Discord and decided to go and find myself an end city so I could get some Elytra. I mean, it made sense. If I ever fell off one of my dragons, I could just fly to safety and everybody knows getting around with Elytra is so much fun. So I eventually found this little place. Unfortunately, there was nothing around it, no ship. And I went in, had a little bit of a look around and I didn't find anything. Then I found another little tower area, but again, there was no ship. I did go inside and loot up some of the stuff, finding some more diamonds and some other ores. But I mean, this was taking me a lot longer than I wanted. And you know me, I don't really have patience. But eventually I did go ahead and find myself a ship. I got in here, took out some of the shulkers, and eventually went ahead and got myself the lovely little Elytra. Oh yeah, this, this shulker was giving me a hard time. T took me a while to kill this guy, but of course, eventually I got him. I got my wings. I was super happy. Thank you for the shout out, Bone Crusher. I mean, I probably would have forgot to do this if it wasn't for you. So uh, yeah, being in my Discord does have its benefits. You get to tell me what to do. Anyway, I got myself another dragon ahead and put it down. I still don't know where I got that first one. And then I start enchanting more of my stuff. I used some books to get some better enchantments and I equipped it to my gear. But um, yeah, things were going pretty Pretty well and I decided it was time to go and check out that obelisk because my man Mr. Tree in the Discord said go to the Darklands and get all three of the dragons. So I'm like hey these guys get to tell me what to do so I'm gonna do it. So I went back to the obelisk and got into this wonderful world of the Darklands. 
I did find this little underground cave thing and got myself a fortune tree book, but then it was time and to go and get all of these dragon eggs. First one was the mummy egg, and then we got down to the zombie egg, which is a lot more difficult. I mean, the spawners down here are crazy. There were zombies everywhere. But guys, come on, you don't have to worry about me. I have seriously good armor and seriously good weapons. Ignore the fact that I was down to three and a half hearts there, and uh, let's just move on. Anyway, I grabbed the zombie egg and headed for the next one. This time, it was the turn of the vampire dragon egg. A really, really cool dragon. I decided to grab some of this blood tree as well, because it's pretty epic, and when I got back out of that dimension, I decided to take the obelisk back home so I could have easy access to the Darklands. As you can see, my little dragon egg room here was getting pretty cramped, so I was gonna have to do something about that. So I decided to stick with the theme and basically do as I was told. I was basically doing exactly what the guys in the Discord were telling me to do, and that was to go and find more of the dragon eggs contained within the dungeons. So it was time to go back to the Darklands to find myself a Lycan dungeon. So this entailed killing a lot of these wolves, but mainly the black wolves, which dropped the tier three key. I mean, finding tier 1s and tier 2s was pretty easy, but finding a tier 3 was almost impossible. But, of course, thankfully, I got it done. I eventually, well, went through a tier 2, but then I found the tier 3 from that guy. Super long process and hard to do, but, I mean, I got it done eventually. Um, here's me stuck inside a wall, and I almost died. That, that, that was a little bit annoying. I, I can't really remember what happened there, but I obviously showed you because I almost died. But we went into the tier tree like in dungeon anyway, and <laughs> with a bit of a bad start getting knocked off the pedestal, we eventually got our way through this thing. I mean, do you see those gigantic werewolves? Those dudes are tough. I had to stay outside that door and just pop shots as long as I could because if I had went in there, that dude would have absolutely destroyed me. But eventually we did get to the end of this thing and eventually we found the chest. I think it's like a 1 in 5 chance to get this thing, so I mean I was super lucky to be able to get it. We went through all the doors and there it was, the Lycan Egg. A super rare dragon and I was pretty much delighted to get that but I wasn't finished there for these few days because as you can remember the guys in the discord said I need to go to the fire nation dungeon too so that's what I did we got to the tier 3 fire nation dungeon pretty easy we went through took out all of these guards and mages and got to the final area after opening up all the heavy door key doors does that sentence make sense? It kind of does, I don't know. Anyway, we opened up the chest and there it was. Oh my days, the Flame Spitter Dragon. Two unbelievably hard dragons to get, but we had done it with ease. So the Dragonfire mod gets an update every single month. And the month of January brought us a brand new dragon and this was the nest. It was absolutely epic. It was out in the middle of the ocean, but I did find it pretty easily when I uploaded the new mod. This thing was absolutely epic. The Coral Dragon Egg. I grabbed it and also grabbed some of the materials from its nest because it was pretty bountiful and decided to hatch this thing because it was a brand new, never before seen dragon. I called this little guy Bubble. I thought it was a pretty cute name. I mean, Coral and Water and Bubble, but yeah, there he is. He was absolutely majestic. I mean, check out his head. He's got like these sunbeams kind of coming from his eyes or like horns. I mean, he's super colorful. I really, really like this guy a brand new dragon. I decided to level him up just a little bit with some dragon treats and I mean this guy was so cool, super happy to spend those two days getting a brand new dragon. Woohoo, so good. So like I said before my dragon egg room was getting a little bit cramped and I suppose all of these epic dragon eggs did deserve somewhere a little bit cooler to chill out. So I got my build on for the next few days. I made this gigantic platform and put down some lovely quartz pillars so I could store all of the dragon eggs. Basically display them, make them look super cool. So eventually I started putting down the dragon eggs and I was happy with what I had achieved. I mean, this looks really good. I got myself some wool, dyed it red and got myself some carpet. 
I mean, for a couple of days, yeah, I mean, I didn't achieve a lot, but I mean, I'm, I never said I was the best builder in the world. I did go out hunting again and found some more dragon eggs and some more stuff. Kind of got distracted for these few days, but at least now I had the folly falcon egg. I had all three falcon eggs, which I was pretty happy about. I did make a second floor as well, so I mean, I did achieve over these couple of days. So now that I had myself a nice little area to keep the dragon eggs, I decided to go on the hunt for some more. The first one I found was the gladius egg, and then I found a beautiful rainbow dragon egg, and then I found another night stalker egg. I say another, I think I found one of them before. I definitely found a high drop terror, but basically I went around trying to find as many eggs as I could for the next few days. Eventually I found a lotus dragon egg, which is super hard to find, but a really beautiful dragon. So I was super happy with all of these finds, especially the nightlight dragon, because that is one of my favorites in the game. Now that my top tier was finished, I had 30 eggs sitting there looking beautiful. Actually, I think it was 36. I can't really remember, but there was a lot of dragon eggs. I was super happy. Then I noticed there was some sort of crazy temple building that was actually pretty close to where my home was. I decided to go check it out. Didn't really seem to find anything, so I decided to tunnel around. And then eventually I did find this little open room area, which had a chest. Ooh, I just found a mending book and a lot of food too. There was also a chest on the opposite side that had some more diamonds and more enchanted books. I found fire aspect and some other stuff, and again, more food. This was a pretty nice find and a good end to these few days. I was able to enchant up my gear some more. So as you guys know, I called my new Night Fury Ghost with the intention of basically making him a Shadow Fury. Because I thought Ghost and Shadow kind of went together. Okay, that's not important. But we went and found ourselves a Shadow Nation Warrior. We got the Tier 3 key and got inside the Shadow Nation Dungeon. Eventually, we were able to work our way through, killing some mages, picking up some heavy door keys, and some other stuff along the way. Eventually, we got to the end and got the Shadow Essence. An absolutely epic find. I then found another Fury Temple and got the ingredients that I needed. We went in with the Warped Spider Legs, we went in with the Shadow Essence, and then these Wisp things. Not really sure what they are, but whatever. We got the Shadow Stone. It was done. Absolutely epic. I was ready to turn my Fury Ghost into a Shadow Fury. Oh my days, this guy was absolutely majestic. I mean, come on, guys. Look at this dude. He is so sick. Woohoo! Alright, so it goes without saying I was super hyped after getting my Shadow Fury, but it was day 70 and the journey continued. I actually started off here by finding myself a skeleton spawner, which was pretty epic. It was right beside my home and this new area would be great for grabbing bones. Of course, I need bones to make dragon treats, so I was able to get a lot because I had a lot of food and then I was able to go ahead and make nearly two full stacks of dragon treats. I could get any dragon I wanted up to level 100 with ease now. So I headed out on an adventure to find more dragon eggs, but the first thing I found was a one half of the frog dungeon key. I was going to use that later on, but for now I wanted to get dragon eggs. So the first one I found was the Terex. I continued on and then found a Magnus egg. I was feeling good. I was finding eggs that I had not seen before. I then went ahead and found an ice biome or snow biome, whatever you want to call it. I hadn't been here before, so I was going to get a lot of new dragons. First one was a Titan Woolly Hell, then I went on and found myself a Shard. These are all absolutely epic and brand new that I had not got before. I then found this place. It was like some sort of a Christmas addition to the mod. I couldn't remember what dragon was in there and I didn't have the key, so I didn't really stay too long, but I probably would come back to this thing. I then continued on and found this place. It was like a barn for reindeer because it had the reindeer dragon egg. I had a look at the chest to see if I could find anything, but nothing there. But more importantly, I had a brand new dragon egg to add to my collection. This was going super well but not as good as this. The last egg that I found on this little egg adventure was the Crimson Gorgon. 
This thing is one of the biggest dragons in the game and super hard to find. As you can see, I had a very good start to the bottom tier of my dragon egg display. Okay, so as you can tell from that image, this dragon is the funniest looking dragon you have ever seen. Not the one on the screen right now, but the one that we are about to go and get. The Frogon Dragon. It's pretty much a meme, but I had to get it because I have to get all of the eggs. So I headed out on a mission to find that. But before I did, I actually found a Zippleback egg, which was pretty cool because it's a two-headed dragon and hard to find. Anyway, I got to a Swamplands and started taking out some of these frog spearmen. I actually got myself a frog spear, which was pretty cool, but I decided to head back home because I knew that I needed to get myself some milk because these dudes are poisonous. I mean, poisonous frogs, so annoying. Anyway, I found another part to the key, but it was the top part. It took me a long time, but eventually I got the bottom part of the key and I was able to combine the two together. And then I found this guy. Oh my days. Are you kidding me? This dragon is so hard to find and I randomly found it. The screaming death dragon egg. Oh man, that was such a good find, and I was super hyped to get into this frog dungeon to try and get this guy. Oh man, yeah. This seems fun and kind of cool and the whole lot, but this is one of the hardest dungeons in the game. Straight off the bat, these little tiny frogs come at me, and then there's like a crazy crocodile dude i mean look at them they poison you straight away i was getting bombarded by these little creatures and they're so hard to see because of all this foliage there's also more frog spearsmen there are frog ninjas and these frog mages they all come at you hard but eventually i made it through and opened up the frog chest to thankfully find <laughs> the frog on egg. Man, I was so lucky to find that in the first dungeon. But the dragon egg hunt continued because I did want to get them all and there was a lot. I found myself another. I couldn't remember if I already had this or not, but I grabbed it anyway and then this happened. I could not believe my eyes. I found a light fury. I mean, we talk about rare dragons and we talk about hard things to find. The Light Fury is super rare and unbelievably difficult to find, and I had found it. I was super hyped, I couldn't believe it. I also got myself a spare Bewilderbeast egg, put that down, and decided I had to hatch this thing. I mean, it was a Light Fury. Yes, it would have been nice to have it over there in the display, but I have to hatch this thing. So I got it into the incubator, and I got it ready. I hatched it, and I decided to call her Bulb. Don't really know why. If you guys can remember, and uh, you, you know, you, you let, let me know. Because yeah, this was an episode on the channel, you, you guys get that now. But I don't know why I call it Bulb. I don't know, maybe because it's super cute and her head kind of looks like a little bull, but I don't know. I was unbelievably excited. As you can see here, I kind of flipped out. Let's check this out. Are you guys ready? I just kind of went crazy. I was just like super excited. I just went, ah! Yeah, yeah. I mean, it happens when you get excited. Anyway, I made myself some dragon treats so I could level her up a little bit, but I was going to keep her as a baby. Then I went to the nether, got myself some glowstone dust so I could combine it with these wonderful blocks of quartz to make an actual dragon pedestal. So like I said, I leveled up the Light Fury a little bit, got myself an orb, put her inside and put down the pedestal. You can now put the orb on top of this thing and it looks absolutely amazing. Loving it. So now that I had myself a Light Fury, um, I had a Shadow Fury, I had a Flame Fury, I kind of, well, wanted to see if I could get all the Furies. So I got back to my Dragon Science Lab, got some of the Night Fury DNA, and realized if I got myself a level 100 Storm Falcon, I could create the Storm Fury. So that was my new mission. I got myself the Storm Falcon Egg, incubated this thing, and decided to get those dragon treats that I had been saving up and get this guy to level 100 straight off the bat. So that's what I did. Got him into the incubator, got him incubated, and hatched this dude straight away. The Storm Falcon was going to be named Hurricane. I mean, a beautiful little dragon in itself, but I was basically just gonna use this guy for his DNA. But before I could grab his DNA, I had to get him to level 100. 
<laughs> I mean, this is sped up and it looks kind of cool, but it takes ages to feed these guys all of those treats. Anyway, at level 25, he was ready to fly, and as you can see, he was looking super good. Eventually, I did get him to level 100 though, so I grabbed my DNA extractor and extracted the DNA. No, I didn't, because I didn't have an empty orb, so I had to go back in the chest and realized I didn't have one, so I had to go make another one. I got the mana infused glass and gold and made the empty DNA orb. I was then able to extract the DNA and get ready to combine these two to create a brand new Fury Dragon. I don't know what it is about dragon science, but it is extremely satisfying. As you can see, both DNA combined together to create the brand new dragon egg containing the Storm Fury. So once again, I got it into the DNA incubator and got it incubated. It was then ready to be cracked and obviously then ready to be hatched. I was super excited, a brand new fury egg just like that. And keeping with the theme, we decided to call this guy Cyclone. Oh Man, these furies are absolutely epic. You gotta love the artists from the Dragonfire mod. These guys really know what they're doing. These dragons are absolutely so, so sick. And as you can see, I had the Flame Fury, I had the Shadow Fury, and I now had the Storm Fury. And don't forget my little Bone Fury here. I mean, this was going pretty well. We were achieving a lot, but again, we still had more to go. I finished off these few days by going back down to my little bone farm here and getting as many bones as I could. Yeah, it's kind of fun. I turned those bones into dragon treats and leveled up my storm fury just enough so I could fly this guy. And as you can see, as he gets older, he starts to look unbelievably cool. I then went out, found myself an ace dragon egg and I got myself a little bone napper egg too. Pretty good. So as you can see from this thumbnail, it was the final push to go ahead and try find every single dragon egg in the game. I started off by going back to this little Christmas shelter thing. It was full of these angry little elves. I hate these guys. They were, they were trying to kill me the whole time and I mean, they were almost successful. Look, look at these little guys. I mean, they did drop fun loot. Man, it was kind of funny watching them burn. But I mean, yeah, they're super annoying. Eventually I got to the end and the snowball dragon was there. It took me a while to find it, but in these little secret present chests, I found the snowball egg. Again, another kind of a meme dragon, but we had to find it and we did. I found a little village close by which was able to get me around a lot easier because I had to find more and more of the eggs that I hadn't seen before. The first one was the Death Gripper. No, this isn't, is this the Deck Ripper? Hold on, I can't remember. What was it? This, this could, uh, yeah, 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 it's the Deck Ripper. We found that and pushed on to try and find more. Then I found the Bee Dragon Nest. I mean, I love this dragon. It's super cool and it did take me till now to find this thing. I mean, it was day 85 and the Tigris, which is also pretty common. I found that too on day 85, so happy days. I then remembered that I had a Elytra and I probably should have made myself some fireworks a long time ago because this is a really quick way to get around. So I kept on going, getting around with my new Elytra system and I ended up finding myself this guy. Ooh, a Skrill. I, I almost killed myself in that lava there as well. It's pretty embarrassing. I probably should have left that out. Ah, too late now, right? Mm. Anyway, yeah, I got this Skrill egg, which is also a pretty rare dragon and super cool looking, so a good little find. I mean, I was finding every single dragon that I needed to find, so it was pretty sweet. It was day 86, and I start putting down the eggs in my second floor display area. I mean, I think I had every single egg. I wasn't entirely sure because I mean, there are so many of them. Check this out. I mean, the whole top floor was covered. I think there was like 36 up there and like another 20 below. Yeah, so now that I thought that I had found all of the eggs, I asked for some help in the Discord once more. I said we only had 14 days remaining, but what should I do? I, I kind of ran out of ideas. Anyway, the guys told me that I should level up my dragons to level 100. That would probably take a long time. But there were some other good suggestions, mainly being get a rare skin. And then, funnily enough, one of the guys said, hatch 50 eggs. Hmm. 
yeah, I kind of decided I was actually going to do it. I was going to go ahead and try hatch as many dragons as I could. This way, basically, I could have every single dragon in the game and it would give me a chance to go ahead and try find a rare skin, which is really hard to do. It's like a 1 in 20 chance, so it was going to be pretty difficult. But I got to work. I start making as much of these incubators as I could because I was going to go ahead and get all of the dragons into the incubators, but it was going to take time. So I think I ended up getting three tier two ice incubators and three tier two lava incubators. So we were ready to go. We were going to get these guys in and try hatch as many eggs as we could. In went the Death Gripper and some other ones. We got the Skrill, we got the Rainbow Dragon, the infamous Frogon, we got the Tigris there and the Bee Dragon. Basically, this was going to take a while and it was going to be a lot of work, but I decided to do it. I got all of the eggs and put them into chests right beside the area where I was going to do all the incubating. I had four of each incubator and it was time to start. So the snowball dragon went in, we've got the new dragon, I uh, can't remember what that one was called, but we got ourselves the flame spitter and the ace dragon. Basically I was going with ones that I knew were lava and ones that I knew that were ice. So it did take a while because I had to get all of the fuel, I had to go back and forth to get water, back and forth to get more lava, but eventually I was getting these guys incubated. The plan was to get them all incubated and ready to hatch. I wasn't going to start hatching one and then incubating one, I wanted to get them all incubated and all ready to be hatched at the exact same time. This was laborious, but it was going to be epic. I decided to make as many of the DNA, no, not DNA orbs, just the regular orbs as well, because I wanted to place all of the dragons on pedestals. Dude, it was a lot of work, but I did think that it was going to look absolutely epic when we had it all done. So I put down the orbs onto the pedestals, making them ready for all these dragons when I was going to get them hatched. But I mean, looking at all of them there, you guys, you guys gotta understand, this was going to take forever. There were so many dragons, but I was determined and I was going to get it done. So I continued on working for the three or four days and eventually I think I did get them all incubated. Yeah, but I was wrong because I then discovered that I was actually missing a couple. I mean, check out how many dragons I just incubated, but I did discover that I needed to find three more. So I went out on a mission trying to find all of them, which I did. I marked them up and then went on my little mission to go ahead and get them. So the first one I got, then I went got the second one. I mean, I went past this thing so many times, but just thought I had always had it, but I didn't. The last one I found was the Clang Dragon. I couldn't believe I didn't have this guy. I mean, I love this dude. It's like a metal robotic dragon. And it's so cool. I couldn't believe I didn't have it, but I did have all of them now. The blue phoenix went in, the clang went in. I was getting these things incubated, so I was happy out. Then I realized there was a new dragon that I totally forgot about, which came, I think, in like November or December, which was the Aztec dragon. So I went and found that as well. I mean, there's so many dragons in this mod, it is so epic. Again, I got that thing in and incubated, and I also decided to start hatching some more eggs. For some reason, I made another Storm Fury. I don't really know why. I think I was just trying to get myself a rare, but uh, I don't know. I called it Sarah as well. I mean, this is a very weird part of the video. Does anyone know why I did this? I have no idea. I mean, yeah, cool, I got another Fury, but I already have that thing. So weird, Sarah, why Sarah? Alright, so it was day 93 and it was actually time. We were going to hatch every single dragon in the Dragonfire mod. I mean, this is a lot of dragons, people. I started off by getting all of the orbs ready because I was going to have to put these dragons that I hatched straight into the orbs. Otherwise, it would have been a, just a dragon mess. 
first win, one I did, I should say, was the Blue Phoenix. I called it Bunsen after like a blue flame and a Bunsen burner. I don't know. It wasn't rare. It was cool. Then I did the Clang. Then I got the Aztec. Uh, I called it Old because Aztec times was a long time ago. I was running out of names, people. I had no idea. Although Flow for Sea Shocker, that was actually pretty cool. It was the common skin, so I just kept on going. I got Gigantor. I don't even know if that's how you spell that, but this dude was pretty sick. We got Barry. Barry was a bee dragon. Barry the bee. Bee dragon Barry. I don't know. We got Freddy, um, because it was Halloween, and I was thinking of, like, Freddy Krueger, who was scary. Um, the Silva, I just called him Cliff. I don't know why, but he was absolutely tiny. <laughs> Look at the size of this guy. Super cute. Anyway, after I hatched them, I put them in the orbs and brought them upstairs to the pedestals. This was a pretty cool way of looking at them. Skrill Killer. The Killer Skrill? I, 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 I called it Kill in the Eld. In the Eld? In the end, I should say. I mean, Kill Skrill, Skrill the Kill, Kill Kill. I, I, it was a cool name. Anyway, I kept on going. I got another Storm Falcon. I got the Night Stalker, um, egg number 12, I think this was. I called him Stealth because uh, he's kind of stealthy and he kind of is low. I thought it was a good name. Anyway, I kept on going. The Myth Dragon was called Ryan because I thought that that was Little Lizard's dragon, but that's actually Tiny Turtle's one, so I got that mixed up. Anyway, I called the Gladius Dragon because it's kind of a godlike. I called it Ronaldo because Ronaldo is the best player of all time football you guys you guys watch it i don't know anyway i kept on going i got magnus um i called him bubbles don't, don't know why he was pretty cute i called uh, the titan woolly hell woody um yeah whatever the screaming debt was called snake because he looks like a snake pretty obvious but he was absolutely epic i called the bewilder beast tiny because it's ironic and irony is funny i called the catastrophic quaken shaken and look what happened he bounced out. He was green. I thought that this was a rare skin. I was so excited. I couldn't believe that I actually got a rare. When the catastrophic Quaken is full size, he's kind of like a gray color. So this guy came out green. I was so excited. I finally got myself a rare skin. So I just plowed on through all the rest of the dragons, naming them, hatching them. I mean, it took a while, but it was super fun. I think I came up with some good names. You guys don't get to see now because it just took too long. But I mean, I'm funny. I probably came up with funny names. It probably didn't happen. They were probably terrible. I, I, I don't know. But anyway, I got them all down and eventually I got them all hatched. I mean, look at this little guy. Fangs. That's a cool name. He's got fangs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't, don't judge me. Anyway, I got them all hatched. It looked absolutely amazing up here. And I was pretty stoked that I got myself a rare skin. I decided I was going to get this guy up to level 100. So I started feeding him the treats. So it rolled into day 96 and I kept on feeding this guy up. And when we got to level 25, the most amazing thing happened. It... it turned into the common skin. So it turns out um, they're green when they're babies and then they turn into this kind of dark greeny gray kind of color and I thought it was a rare skin and it wasn't. And I hatched all of the dragon eggs and didn't get one rare skin. Ah, oh, you've gotta be kidding me. But I had to commit. So I decided to just keep leveling this guy up but because he was so big, I only got him up to level 50. In the meantime, I decided to get the stuff I would have needed to make myself a lovely little beacon because I was going to finish off my 100 day experience by taking on a double boss battle. It was time to take on the Ender Dragon and also the Wither Boss at the exact same time. I mean, yeah, how baller is that? It's gonna be epic. So I got myself prepared, all the stuff that I needed, and I got ready to head back to the nether because I needed to get myself some gas tears. So that's exactly what we did. We got in, found ourselves some gas, and started taking them out to get their tears. I needed four of these things because I needed to create four brand new end crystals so we could respawn the dragon. I got back home, made the crystals, and made sure that I was completely prepared. I also made lots and lots of blocks. Blocks of diamonds, emeralds, gold. I mean, look how beautifully shiny these things are. They look so good. I wanted to finish off my 100 days by making the most beautiful beacon that I could. 
So it was time. Myself and Shaken, the catastrophic Quaken, got up to level 50 and got ready to go to the end to take on the double boss battle once more. This was going to be epic beyond belief guys so get ready because the action is about to commence. Day 98 and we were going back in to the end to take on this double boss battle. I mean, I haven't done this many times before because it is kind of difficult, but I did have a level 50 catastrophic Quaken. That guy is absolutely huge and super powerful. So I put down some of the crystals and I put down the soul sand and some of the wither skeleton heads, well, skulls, and got prepared to spawn these two crazy beasts. Gotta be honest, I was kind of nervous, but the last crystal went down and the last skull went on. It was time. The double boss battle was about to commence. So I jumped up onto my gigantic catastrophic quaken and I start taking out these crystals once more. This ender dragon was not going to stand a chance. I mean, I was able to take out the crystals with ease because I could get around super easily with my dragons and of course with my elytra. The Elytra being equipped did get me in trouble from time to time though because, uh, yeah, you really need a chest plate on when you're attacking these things. But taking out the dragon was super easy and I did that pretty quickly. Although, when I use the word quickly, yeah, that didn't last too long at all. Because we rolled into the next day, it was day 99 and I now had to take out the Wither. This was a much more difficult battle. I tried to use my dragons, but it just wasn't working. He kept on flying really high and I couldn't get the shots off. So I had to risk it and just take bow shots from the ground. Eventually, I did defeat him. Well, I actually didn't land the last blow. I, I think an Enderman did. But I mean, uh, all I wanted was the crystal and I got it. So happy days. The battle was over and I had got what I wanted. I used the crystal with some obsidian and glass and made the infamous beacon. Ooh, mission complete. I was super excited. I also made myself some red glass because I mean, red is my color and I wanted this beacon to shine bright in my colors across this land that I had conquered over these 100 days. I powered up the beacon and man, it was so good. Just like that, it was day 100 and I finished this thing off. The best beacon you could imagine and every single dragon in the game. Dude, this was a lot of gameplay, but it was so much fun to do. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please, please, please smash that like rating. Subscribe if you're new to the channel as well, guys. But until next time, I am going to leave it there. You may have noticed that my voice was a bit strange throughout this video. I've been a little bit sick over the last week. So, uh, yeah, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching. We're going to leave it there. 100 days in Minecraft Dragonfire. So epic. Until next time, I am out. Peace.